Yo, man, what's good, YouTube, man? We're back for part two. Let's get it. Oh. Don't get on here flies like y'all kill for smooth on power. Y'all ain't do shit to smooth. Bro, I'm not trying to talk about no dead, no, 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 no bodies, none of that. Bro, it's all type people watching. On, on Pyro makes mom kill kill smooth on dig you and or face right have to do with that on Pyro mixed mob members were even in the chat telling Casey money to stop claiming the murder since his death it was said that 800 fats went crazy in the streets trying to get back for boss smooth he had even been pictured with boss smooth's son showing just how strong their relationship must have been but interestingly setting aside his savage history and reputation one of lil fats's most shocking antics online may well have been his back and forth with an actual redditor from r slash shyrakology this dispute saw both fats and the redditor dropping their locations and trying to meet up for a shootout posting everything for the whole world to see what a mysterious somebody on reddit is crazy dropping locations Re to somebody on Reddit, on Reddit with the handle more slime than fats making a post on Shyrakology calling out fats from 800 saying that if 800 fats posts his location he will pull up and have a live shootout with him redditors would go on to question this user's authenticity to which the user more slime than fats would double down claiming that he is in Chicago and very serious about catching fats Fats himself would even catch wind of the post, sharing it to his own Instagram and asking what is wrong with these people. More Slime Than Fats would then DM a popular Shyrakology user on Instagram asking him to get in touch with Fats directly and reaffirming that he would pull up to his live in person. He would claim that his beef with Fats stemmed from Fats stealing a gun from his younger cousin that belonged to him that he wants back. What? More Slime Than Fats was also very familiar with Fats' IG live antics as he would often go live in enemy hoods attempting to draw out his ops to kill or humiliate them. And I'm outside with my Glock on me, on Glock 21 on me, on Cat Grey out. And I'ma stay on the line and wait for y'all to come and all type of shit on all week. Like I said again, going live on some on your obvious block or something like that, does that, that's not good, bro. Like, I understand, I know, understand you're trying to, Tell people that you really like that and all that, but come on now, bro. That's not, good. That's not really good, though. Be having all that secret ass smoking sh on mid grade. Let me know something. Oh, I'm right down the street. We could do it. We could do whatever on O. Anybody want to smoke, pull up on O. We could do it on Pyro. After learning why more slime than fats was after him, the real fats actually chose to go live together with him. What's up with him? What? Hold on. Hold on. You mo you mo Don't trip, hold on. Are you more slammed than me? Hell yeah, where you at? I'm trying to pull up, shorty. They would then agree on a meetup location, and Fats tells the Reddit user to pull up on 82nd and Drexel. Well, where are you trying to meet what? at? Man, we can meet up on, we can meet on 82nd and Ingleside of Oregon, on 62nd of Kimbark. I'm pulling up right now, and it's merch. With more slime than Fats then confirming that he will go to the meetup, but that he is going to stay online. Fats then calls the Reddit user the police, refusing to link up. More slime than fats would then call the real fat scared before being kicked out of the life. So you scared? <laughs> the pair would briefly go live again, with fats continuing to call more slime than fats the police, with the Reddit user replying, F the US Marshals, showing off a Draco. I'm just well, the US Marshals, see, let's do it. This live itself would be shared to the Shyrakology subreddit, with commenters being worried that someone might be about to end up dead off the back of a Reddit post. Shortly after, 800 Fats then has a change of heart going back on live. He would patrol the area where the two had agreed to meet up, strapped with a number of guns seemingly ready to catch this Reddit user. As this crazy and intimidating ordeal would play out for the world, other commenters on Reddit would be in disbelief. And to the surprise of everybody, more slime than fats actually confirmed in the comments that he in fact pulled up, with a link to a new post showing the exact same view that 800 fats. What? That's crazy. That's crazy. To think about that, that they doing this type of stuff i'm out here now where 800 little fats at bro what is he really looking for him or he just doing this just for like attention or he just trolling you know what I'm saying? sometimes people just do this just to troll they don't really be like but they said you know what i'm saying it's recorded on his life with this post leaving redditors in disbelief once again as commenters would say that they couldn't believe they were about to witness a drill live 
More slime than Fats would then post That's even crazy, more footage of him driving around the agreed area, allegedly just 45 minutes after Fats himself had gone live there. And in the video, you can see that More Slime Than Fats actually covers the exact route that 800 Fats did in his life. This is a crazy move considering the fact that 800 Fats is a certified killer. Then, a tweet by a Chicago Twitter page that shares reports from a police scanner would report that 19 shots had been fired in the area with the report being just 0.4 miles away from 82nd and Drexel, where Fats and More Slime had actually agreed to meet and have their what? shootout. This was posted to the subreddit to the shock of all the Redditors who were following along like some kind of live twisted reality show. With commenting- He said this is the wild shit I've seen on the sub yet. If one of your little- Damn. In disbelief again, that Reddit had seemingly baited a real-life Chicago savage into a real-life shooting. However, another Redditor would make a post debunking the speculation and confirming that this shooting may well have been just coincidental, with more slime than fats hopping online to confirm that it wasn't them shooting in the comments. But some suspect that the shooting may well really have been them and that they're just denying it on Reddit to stay out of trouble. But regardless, this is one of the craziest sagas from the Shyrakology subreddit in history. Where That's a real crazy. Shyrak Savage was drawn out by an internet troll looking for clout into a possible shootout scenario in front of the whole world to see. But anyway, now that you know 800 Fats' body of work, it's pretty clear to see why he has become an extreme example of a crazy Chicago killer. And just months after the more than slime fats ordeal, Lil Twan and Fats would end up getting into a serious real life situation, ultimately catching one of the most infamous and violent cases that I have ever seen from a Chicago rapper. The heist. On November the 15th, 2021, 800 members Lil Fats and Lil Twan attempted a GTA style heist on an armored truck, something that has apparently become commonplace in Chicago over the recent years. These two allegedly carried out the robbery with two members from Nooski Gang 079, Dewey 4, an alleged cousin of Fats, and another member called Spook. At 9am, Lil Fats and Lil Twan would meet up at a home in the 8700 block of South Saginaw to plan out the attack. They allegedly had said that they had a lick lined up to hit an ATM and they would be getting a lot of cash. At 10.30, they grouped with the 079 members and travelled to the Bank of America on 250 West 83rd Street. Here, they would witness a Garda armored truck arriving to the bank, with LaShonda Hartz and two male colleagues emptying ATM containers and refilling them with around- They try to rob ATM, an armor- Person, try to rob an, an, ar an armored truck? Yeah, good luck with that, because- God. Uh, one thing, you can probably rob, but you gotta be smart, though. You have to be extra smart to rob something like that. Especially an armed truck. You have to be smart. Or, plan, or planning out maybe months before that you, you're gonna rob some, you gotta have people inside or something, you know what I'm saying? You gotta, you gotta, you gotta know me. You can't just do it that day because it's, it's not gonna work. Around 50 to $80,000 cash. Police would later confirm that Antoine Davis, aka Lil Twan, would jump out, attempting to grab the container, ensuing a struggle. Montgomery Jennings, aka Lil Fats, and one of the 079 members would then exit their stolen vehicle and begin to shoot at the guards. LaShonda Hartz would suffer three gunshot wounds, mm. later dying of her injuries. RP, and in a tragic turn of events, it would turn out RP, that LaShonda RP, Hartz RP. was actually new to this job, and she had clearly been excited to be starting this role as messages to a friend from September the 25th, 2021 were later released, where LaShonda wow. explains just how much she was looking forward to working in her new job as an armored guard. Bro, a new job, great pay benefit, plus a $5,000 sign-on bonus, and for... $5,000 sign-on bonus, that's good. Thanking God for her blessings. Only 68 days after starting the job, the heist would take place, killing her at work. The other victim was shot once in the stomach and taken into hospital, initially in critical condition, but thankfully surviving. Police and prosecutors said that the robbery crew were actually unable to get the cash container from the guards during the attack, and they would flee the scene in a stolen Lincoln. Ultimately, they had failed the robbery in every way possible, and the bank's surveillance cameras would catch the attack and what the men were wearing. Shortly after, a witness was parked behind an SUV when he saw the stolen Lincoln pull up alongside the SUV. Lil Fats and Lil Twan got out of the Lincoln and entered the SUV driving away. 30 minutes later, Lil Fats and Lil Twan were seen on another CCTV camera entering a strip mall on the 6700 block of South Stony Island, just a 12 minute drive away from the bank. Here, they would rob the Boost mobile store, getting away with just a bag of mobile phones. Court documents would then show that Lil Fats- Bro, what? So not only did the the bank the uh, arm trucker thing failed, they killed one person. They critically injured another person. They didn't want to miss, and they only got away with some damn boost mobile phones. 
Mm. Bats and Lil Tuan regrouped yeah, with me. the two 079 members at around 11.30 a.m. at the original location where they planned the attack on South Saginaw. One witness claims to have heard gunshots, followed by an Infinity SUV tra crashing into a tree. Lil Fats and Lil Tuan would then run into a nearby home, and whilst inside the home, prosecutors said that a witness would see the pair and other individuals passing around a duffel bag containing a rifle as they talked about hiding their guns. Lil Fats would later tell one of the people inside the home to call the police and tell them that somebody had been shot and killed in a car outside the house. This was all because 800 members had actually turned on the 079 members, shooting them dead in the SUV outside. Dewey what? Oh my gosh! Are you serious? What the fuck? Y Bro, they killed them? What? What? Lil Fats and Lil Tuan would then run into a nearby home, and whilst inside the home, prosecutors said that a witness would see the pair and other individuals passing around a duffel bag containing a rifle as they talked about hiding their guns. Lil Fats would later tell one of the people inside the home to call the police and tell them that somebody had been shot and killed in a car outside the house. This was all because 800 members had actually turned on the 079 members, shooting them dead in the SUV outside. Dewey was even allegedly Fats's cousin and had plugged his music publicly on Instagram before eerily calling his cousin Snake Net. Continue. He turned. So allegedly, this is his cousin. Bro, this is crazy, man. Crazy. This. A car outside the house. Wow. This was all because 800 members had actually turned on the 079 members, shooting them dead in the SUV outside. Dewey was even allegedly Fats's cousin and had plugged his music publicly on Instagram before eerily calling his cousin Snake Net. Continuing his streak of backdooring people who thought they could trust 800, this time Fats had taken it further, snaking his own cousin and killing him. Shortly after this, a SWAT team was called into the area, where very quickly the pair were then arrested and charged with murder, attempted murder, and armed robbery. Investigators would find the bag of mobile phones inside the crashed vehicle, and inside the home were five guns, clothing, oh shoes, and a mask, all matching witness descriptions of the robbers who stuck up the armored truck. The guns were also covered in gunpowder residue and matched the shell casings found at the scene of the robbery. This was a wild incident and would make the news once the media... To conclude, when it's all said and done, both Lil Fats and Lil Tuan killed three people and seriously injured another guard, whilst likely traumatizing anybody that they bumped into along their rampage, all to achieve nothing. They left the bank empty-handed, and the phones they stole were left inside the crashed car. Both chose to crash out, and will now likely spend the rest of their lives behind bars due to this failed robbery. But to make things even worse, they chose to turn on their accomplices for seemingly no reason two men who they chose to bring along to the job, with this being made even more tragic when you consider the fact that Dewey 4 was just finding his feet in music and making serious waves as a drill rapper. His most popular uh. song would even exceed 1 million views being released after his death, and in the video, Dewey is memorialized in the most suitable Chicago drill style there is as a cardboard cutout surrounded by masked men with pistols and extended magazines. By choosing to embark on that robbery, Lil Fats and Lil Tuan essentially ruined the lives of everyone involved and murdered an innocent woman just doing her job. And if November the 15th wasn't bad enough, the fallout following their arrest would be as explosive as the incident itself. Despite being a villain in Not this- Not only they killed an innocent woman just doing her job, bro, and she was excited. She had a 5,000 sign-up bonus. You failed that, you failed that shit. You didn't get no type of money. You went to Boost Mobile and got some phones. Crashed the car, you killed it. Y'all about this. Streets and a hardened Chicago gangster, in the end, Lil Fats would cooperate on the murder of LaShonda Hartz, claiming that Spook was the man that killed her. And he snitched. Wow. As soon as, they, as, soon as, as soon as people get caught for what they did, and it's time for them to send their crimes and, the, and, and consequences. Fats has been criticized by many due to him cooperating, despite allegedly being a hardened killer and self-proclaimed snake. Even though Spook is no, now dead, Fats, who is considered now. one of the craziest known members, is cooperating with the police and violating the so-called street code. Lil Tuan, his accomplice, has even labelled him a rat from his Instagram page. As have 800's ops from Taekwon World, labelling Fats as a snitch, a snake, and a killer all in one. Fats telling on Spook is likely an attempt at an alibi to dodge himself being held responsible for the murder charge of LaShonda Hartz. However, the two murders of Dewey 4 and Spook, as well as the armed robberies themselves, are all backed up by a mountain of evidence. With all of this meaning, it's pretty unlikely that Fats can beat these charges, whether he's informing or not. 800 Lil Tuan actually took to his Instagram story two weeks ago, strangely claiming that the feds dropped his case as there's not enough evidence. Mm. However, this is pretty hard to believe, considering how much evidence was showcased just on that news report alone. 
Meanwhile, Big Mike from 800 chimed in, labelling both Lil Tuan and Fats as rats, and claiming that both of them are no longer in the gang 800. Whilst awaiting his trial, 800 Lil Fats has had his fair share of altercations in jail, with one even being seen in prison guard body cam footage, where Lil Fats is released into his cell, where he then jumps at his cellmate, attacking him, then elbowing another prison guard in the nose. <laughs> So now so now they in jail now. First he snitched. Now he's gonna be there for the rest of his life and he snitched. But don't get it. As soon as they get caught, niggas on the central was saying, come on, nigga, I thought you was like that. I thought you was, yeah, I'm like that. Come on, bro. Now, now, now nigga, you want to snitch and shit now? Come on, bro. Relax. Now niggas want to snitch, like, bro. I'm not I'm just trying to elbow in one of my arms, man. Relax. He got me on my nose. Hey, what's up? Ah, Relax. I my wrist, man. I'm going to jail. Relax. We're not even applying pressure. Relax. Look, man, my left wrist, man, on my son, man. I can't feel it. I'm not resisting, man. On my son, I can't feel my hand. My hand is burning. You got control of your wrist. We're escorting you. Like I said, you became combative. You struck one of my officers. I need you to relax. All right? Look, man, I... We are walking slow, sir. And we're taking the elevator. You're not even taking the stairs, so relax. You got to see that final? All being in row one time, go five five. Sergeant Abrowski, star number three three zero seven. Today's date is May fourth. It's two o five a.m. of the detainee. Jamie. First name. Yeah, ID number. Two o two one 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 eight o nine one. So you attacked the guy in the cell. Yeah. Why? Because we were into it. That's why I took off running when they gave me let me out the handcuffs. The uh, detainee was cleared uh, medically by Nurse Lorenz. Uh, the detainee is awaiting uh, new housing. This concludes interview with the detainee. So now he messed up. Now he in jail for the rest of his life. Hey, Jennings. It's been reported by popular Instagram page Squid Ape that Lil Fats was beaten up in jail by one of the family members of the victims killed in the robbery. Lil Tuan would also share that he was attacked by ops in the jail too, with Fats replying saying that he was paid $150 to say this, as well as other posts circulating appearing to claim that Fats was beaten up in jail himself. Unfortunately, it may be years before we find out what punishment, if any, will be dished out for this heinous heist turned murder spree. The only thing that is certain is that three lives were lost that day, and if the feds can prove it, Fats and Tuan will likely spend the rest of their lives behind a prison door, leaving behind their families and their loved ones. It just goes to show you that, as usual, the streets are a dead end. Whether it's gangbanging or robbing, these kinds of activities can only- Wait, so they're not- so they're not- they're, they're not even charged yet? So they don't- they don't have enough evidence, or they don't have evidence to charge them yet? That's to crazy. a grave. Or prison. I hope that the next generation of youngsters growing wait, so up. They don't have, wait, so they don't have evidence or what? Anyways, man, that's gonna the video, man. Video one cast part two is the last part, man. I'm uh, saying, hey, go. I'll see y'all later, man. We out, nappy gang, nappy squad.